In the late 1800s, when Joseph Moore began teaching at Friends Boarding School in Richmond, Indiana, there was little for students of science to physically experience. He felt that people learn by seeing, touching, and doing. And so he went about collecting the specimens needed to help his students explore the natural world in Richmond and beyond. He collected incredibly broadly. So he collected fossils, he collected animals, live animals, he collected um, artifacts, um, archaeological artifacts. Soon, the school, now Earlham College, felt it was time to expand. By 1889, the college built a new building and they gave him an entire wing for the Joseph Moore Museum. And that's when it became not just for teaching the college students here, but a space that the whole community was welcome to come. Many of Moore's finds are still on display. The Randolph Mastodon, assembled from two skeletons, was found in farms and wetlands across Indiana. In 1889, the president of Earlham College brought Ta'an to Moore's museum. Hers are one of only two Egyptian mummified remains in the state of Indiana. Also in 1889, Moore collected this fossilized skeleton of an extinct giant beaver. It's still the most complete in the world. There's a presence. <laughs> <laughs> and it just has a, has a full body effect to, to be right there with a giant beaver. And for many really rare, unique specimens, um, you wouldn't get to see the original. Our museum, in, in the spirit of Joseph Moore, is learning from the real objects. Today, the Joseph Moore Museum houses some 55,000 specimens spanning a mind-boggling 450 million years of history in eastern Indiana and western Ohio. When you come here, you understand this specific spot in Indiana, in the, in the U.S., in the world, over time. So you can see a collection of what, what lives here now, birds, mammals, things that you might see outside, but you also can see what was here 12,000 years ago, in the Ice Age, there were mastodons here walking the same land that you are walking now. Even further back in time, we also have deposits of Ordovician fossils. 450 million years ago, before big, like mastodons, existed. So you can see throughout time what, what was happening here right in Richmond. Now, more than a century after its founding, the museum continues to be a place where students learn not just about the natural world, but how to present it to the public. This is a very unique model for a museum. The students are, and have been for so many years, learning so many pieces of how museums are run. What is the role of a museum in its community, in the world? What are the ways that um, museums do great great good in their community and what are the ways that museums need to be really careful. Um, so students are learning how to build exhibits, they're learning how to design exhibits, how to understand what you want to share and how to share it and then actually doing that piece. The museum also has a large collection of live animals that students can learn from and teach the public about. I want to be a veterinarian. It's important to know how to handle animals properly so that you don't hurt them and they don't get hurt. You also learn about educating people about animals while holding them and here's the proper way to pet them, here's how you don't hurt them, <laughs> all that stuff. And it's kind of also just fun. <laughs> and while the museum displays are an impressive example of the history contained at the Joseph Moore Museum, they're only a fraction of what's available for students to explore. So students who want to do a research project are going to be going from the original specimens and that holds a tremendous amount of information. I can tell you that the way that things are colored, sometimes things are just that color and other times it's the way light interacts with it that makes the color. It's structural color versus pigmentation color. So I can tell you that this hummingbird has a red throat and then I can show you that it actually, it doesn't look like it until the light hits it just right. And it's really different for students to read about it than actually see it and do it. Seeing, experiencing, and doing, just as Joseph Moore intended.